What's up, it's Chris Heria. Today I'll be going over what exactly is the best diet for calisthenics athletes. Let's get into it. First off, what is calisthenics and how is it different from other forms of training like weightlifting and bodybuilding? Well, calisthenics is a form of strength training which uses an individual's body weight for resistance to perform exercises, as opposed to lifting an external weight as often seen done with weightlifting and bodybuilding. This means that the goal with calisthenics is to be as strong as possible relative to your body weight, which in turn results in a more aesthetic physique. Whereas with weightlifting or bodybuilding, the goal is to lift external weights to build more muscle mass to achieve their ideal physique. In the case of the weightlifter, the more weight they add to their body, the more they can usually lift as the extra weight can assist their lift and doesn't add as much to the resistance. Whereas with the calisthenics athlete, every pound of your body weight is resistance. So the more muscle mass you carry combined with the least amount of body fat equates to a more effective efficient body that's easier to control across many advanced movements like the 90 degree push-up, planche push-up, front lever pull-up, and many more as every pound of your body weight is necessary in assisting you to perform the exercises as opposed to making the exercise more difficult and weighing you down. So that means the best diet for calisthenics athletes is going to be the one that allows you to build the most amount of muscle while holding on to the least amount of body fat, usually resulting in a lean but very strong and muscular body. But depending on your starting body composition, your calorie intake can greatly different. So if you're carrying a lot of excess body fat, you'll want to eat in a calorie deficit. That is eating less calories than your caloric maintenance. And if you wanted to add on more weight, you would eat in a slight calorie surplus. I recommend no more than a 500 calorie deficit or surplus to ensure you aren't gaining too much fat or losing too much muscle. Now there are many calorie calculators you can use to find out what your specific calorie maintenance is, but you can also track your calories, what you eat for two weeks, ensuring you eat the same amount of calories each day, and check your weight at the same time daily to see if your weight changes or remains the same at the end of the two weeks. If your weight's increased from the starting point, eating the same amount of calories daily and while doing the same daily activity, your calorie maintenance is below that tracked calorie amount. Meaning you are consuming more calories than your caloric maintenance, you are eating on a surplus. If your weight increases after two weeks, your caloric maintenance is above that amount. And if it remains the same, that tracked number is a good estimate as to what your caloric maintenance is. Now as for what is best for a calisthenics athlete to eat, well this can also greatly vary. But the fundamentals should remain the same. You want to eat a diet that's balanced and rich in vitamins and nutrients which will keep your body healthy and strong, regulate hormones, and allow your body to properly perform its functions at its peak. Focus on a high protein diet. Protein is the building blocks for muscle growth, so focus on a high protein diet with a moderate amount of carbs and fats. The carb and fat amount can vary depending on your preferred eating habits, but you still want to ensure that your micronutrients are coming from quality sources. I'm talking about foods that will have good and high nutritional value versus processed foods or snacks that have little to no nutritional value and are just basically empty calories waiting to turn into fat into your body. Protein is the building blocks of muscle growth and it's recommended that you consume around one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. So if your target body weight is 170 pounds, then you would want to be eating 170 grams of protein. So focus on a high protein diet with a moderate amount of carbs and fats. For proteins, stick to lean beef, lean poultry, wild caught fish, eggs, and legumes. These are great sources of protein which will not only support muscle growth but improve your metabolism and reduce fat stores. For your carbs, go for unprocessed or minimally processed whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans. Not only will these offer lots of vitamins, fibers, and minerals, but they're a great source of energy for your body to get you through your workouts and your day. And for your fats, go for unsaturated fats while avoiding trans fats. So skip the french fries, biscuits, and frozen food and stick to avocados, nuts, olives, and some types of fish. Consuming too much trans fats can lead to risks of heart disease and obesity while your healthy fats can improve brain function lower blood pressure protect your organs aid in cell growth and facilitate the production of hormones if you want to see how and what i eat personally you can check out any of these videos i've done covering what and how i eat to stay shredded all year round another big difference between calisthenics and weightlifting is the presence of straight arm strength and straight arm exercises Eating certain foods high in sugar can trigger inflammation in your joints, which can cause pain and discomfort, especially so when doing exercises like the full planche or Maltese. This type of inflammation would be much more disruptive to a calisthenics athlete as opposed to a weightlifter or bodybuilder, as these static exercises require much more integrity of the joints and connective tissues of the elbows when in comparison to a bent arm exercise, meaning a low sugar diet for calisthenics athletes is a must and becomes increasingly more important the more you progress in your calisthenics journey. 
So stick to getting sugar from natural sources like fruits, instead of other things like cereal, juice, bread, and so on. I personally try to consume no more than 15 to 20 grams of sugar most days, as the majority of calisthenics exercises are compound exercises, requiring a lot more movement from your joints to ligaments, as well as exercises done on your hands like push-ups and planche push-ups, which can place a lot of strain on your wrists. But combine that with a high sugar diet and your joints and wrists are going to be severely inflamed. This added strain can manifest in the form of pain that can be present during an exercise like a handstand or per for days after so constrict your sugar intake if you want to advance to calisthenics injury and pain free and finally we come to the timing of meals most weightlifters and bodybuilders train within an hour or two after eating to get them through their workouts whereas with calisthenics it's not as necessary and sometimes not as beneficial to eat before training when doing certain high level calisthenic skills like the full planche or maltese or even inverted exercises like the handstand and handstand push-up during these types of exercises proper abdomen contraction is vital and may make it harder for some individuals to squeeze their abs if they're their stomach is too full or if they feel full as even the extra added weight from a calisthenics athlete's shoes can make an exercise like a full planche much more difficult so even just adding on a couple more pounds can feel like a huge difference depending on what you're training this applies more so to athletes who train earlier in the day than those who train later in the day as they'd have had a longer time to digest the food from the day prior and in their case would actually benefit from the energy provided from a meal just so long as a few hours have passed and they don't have the full feeling in their stomach it also adds that during weightlifting you would rarely be upside down if ever or doing many or any exercises requiring your stomach to be moving and turning whereas with high level calisthenics your body can consistently change from vertical to horizontal and even upside down also going back to the fact that calisthenics uses your body weight for resistance at a higher level of calisthenics doing exercises like one arm pull-ups or a full planche hold will be more difficult with even just one extra pound added to your body and that includes of course extra weight added to your stomach in the case of weightlifting you won't want to run out of glycogen during your workout and your meal won't add resistance resistance to your workout, so it's much more beneficial to eat before your workout. This may not be a big factor for most or everyone that does calisthenics, as this would affect more of those at a higher calisthenics level, specifically when doing advanced level skills as more fundamental exercises like push-ups, pull-ups, and dips won't really be affected as much by meal timing, but it is something to consider, so find out what works best for you. Now with all that said, you may find some athletes who may stick to these rules and some who don't eat whatever they want and still make gains and progress in calisthenics, and this can be due to different factors like age, gender, and genetics, but I'd highly recommend against it, even if you can get away with it for now, because as you age, it won't be sustainable, and it's simply not healthy or optimal. And eventually, an unhealthy diet will lead to health complications. And the reality is, the better fuel you put into your body, the better your body will perform. Every individual's needs may vary based on their age, gender, metabolism, and training intensity, so it's important to listen to your body and adjust your diet accordingly. But if you need help with your nutrition, meals to lose weight and build muscle, whether it's for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or even dessert, make sure you're subscribed to the Chris Harriet channel and check out these videos right here. And now that you got the diet covered for workouts, tutorials teaching you the most advanced calisthenic skills like the human flag, muscle up, full planche, and so much more step-by-step -step from the very beginning, workout programs that are gonna have you in the best shape of your life, all you need to do is download the Thenix app in the App Store, Google Play Store, or just hit the link down in the video description below. And join the community of millions of other Thenix athletes around the world getting in the best shape of their lives and sharing their journey right now on the Thenix app. And for more workouts just like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button with bell notifications on. I post every single Monday, 10 a.m. USA Eastern Time. And if there's a topic you'd like me to cover in the next video, leave a comment down below and I'll make it happen. In the meantime, check out this other video that's going to have you in the best shape of your life and I'll see you there. Mad love. Peace out, baby.